It's time for fun, learning, commentary, laughs, and more care of the most diverse group in the genealogy and family history world. Welcome to Black Pro Gen Live with your hosts, Nika and True, and the baddest panel in these pedigree streets. Angela, James, Linda, Alex, Ellen, Tony, Shelly, Teresa, Bernice, Felicia, Willie, Renata, and Tasia. It's Black Pro Gen Live, genealogy, family history research with flavor. Hello and good evening, everybody out there on our YouTube channel and out on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're coming in from. We just want to welcome everybody. Um, we're here. We're going to be riding out to Florida today. <laughs> so I know you guys are all excited for this episode. Um, my name is True Lewis, and I'm going to be your co-host for the evening. And now I'm going to turn the mic over to your wonderful host, Nika Smith. <laughs> Hello, True. Hey. <laughs> did you bring did you bring your box full of chicken? <laughs> Girl. <laughs> I'm so mad at you about the vegetables because I had to go to the store and buy fruits and vegetables after I saw your garden today. So I had to waste my 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 good funds on you had to waste your good funds. Well, well, people yeah. forget, you know, that that. I, I had to spend some funds too to get it started. I should probably, maybe next time we do a show, I should probably uh, show a picture, uh, do a garden status photo. I haven't done one of those in a while, so people can see what I'm, uh, what I'm up to in the gardening uh, world. But hey, y'all, what's going on? It's been a minute since we've been on um, tonight's topic. Of course, this literally looks like my son because he is totally obsessed with popsicles right now. That that cures every single ill in the world. Don't, don't we wish it was like that for adults? But learn tips, tricks, and more for researching your ancestors in the Sunshine State. Thank you for joining us tonight for the 59th episode of Black Pro Gen Live. Don't forget to join the conversation. We love when you tweet us at Black Pro Gen. Be sure to hashtag your tweets, Black Pro Gen. Also, don't forget a live chat is taking place if you're watching on a desktop computer. It's at the top right-hand corner of your screen. If you're watching on a mobile app, the YouTube mobile app, it, the live chat is taking place at the bottom of the screen. Have you been like, man, I can't believe I missed that episode. I need reminders. Well, here is your reminder to set reminders. All you need to do is head to my YouTube page and click set reminder under the episodes you're interested in or simply subscribe to the channel and you'll get a reminder each and every time we go live. Since 2013, the Midwest African American Genealogy Institute has provided an amazing learning experience for genealogists and researchers. The Institute, also commonly known as Maggie, is the only African American focused event offering a total of 48 classes over three days, offering a comprehensive genealogical educational experience of benefit for the beginner, the intermediate researcher, and the professional. Join us from July 10th through the 12th, 2018, at the Genealogy Center at the Allen County Public Library in Fort Wayne, Indiana for the fifth, or excuse me, the sixth installment of Maggie, the Teaching Institute. For more information and to register, visit maggieinstitute.org. And I have to remind everybody, the two DNA tracks are full. They've been full for a while. So you'll only be able to select from track one, which is Fundamental Methods and Strategies, which is taught by our own Shelly Murphy. Track three, which is Intermediate Genealogy, Pre and Post-Slavery Era Research with our Genia Bud Janice Minor Forte, or track four, which which is genealogy writing from planning to publication, which is coordinated by our own Angela Walton Raji. Track two is coordinated by our own Bernice Bennett, who will be getting her golden soror pin right around that same time. So you'll be hanging out with me, Shannon Christmas, and Janice Lovelace for uh, that event. So, all right, let me go ahead and uh, make it so that everybody can see us. Got a 
small panel, a little intimate panel for the night. That's all right. Let's get intimate people. So only four, only five of us on. Just go ahead, all of us. Let's just all come off mute because it's not like there's going to be a huge clamoring amount of applause. Thank you, Thank you, <laughs> all right. Since you said, hey, first, go ahead, Teresa. Teresa Vega, Radiant Roots, Bariqua Branches, rep in NYC. And, and tonight, Octavia Butler had to do that. That's some serious Schomburg swag there. <laughs> Shout out to the Schomburg. I'm cracking up because because we be us in statement t-shirts. That's like our thing. We just have statement t-shirts. All right, Ellen. Hey, Ellen Fernandez Sacco from Latino Genealogy and Beyond. Glad to be here tonight and uh, looking forward to learning more about what's presently my home state. <laughs> All right, all right, James. Resident Y chromosome. It's been a been a it's been a couple so shows since you've been on. Am I wrong or? Oh, uh, I think I missed the last one. Um, uh, I think I missed the last one. But either way, I'm here <laughs> and I'm live and in, in in Technicolor for you. I'm James Morgan III, coming to you from the nation's capital, Washington D.C. And uh, it's always a pleasure to be here on Black Pro Gen Live. And I want to make sure that I let everybody know that um. Regardless of how the NBA uh, finals went, next year the Lakers are going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so little known historical fact about Nika is that my mother was praying that I would be a boy and my name was going to be Kareem. <laughs> and you, have to under, you have to understand this in context because I've mentioned this several times on the show. I was born and raised in Southern California. The year I was born was the year before the the finals run the the championship mm. with mm. with you know with with Irvin Magic Johnson, Johnson mm. and uh Rambis and Chris <laughs> and AC Green mm. I can name all of them the Lakers were an institution in my household hence thank God my mother did not name me Karima she could have done that but she did not she went with Nika instead um not like there's anything wrong with Karima but that's just not my wouldn't have fit my personality well we, we love Nicolasa Nicolasa exactly the Nicolasa story true true and true and my girl know, that's what family calls me <laughs> I'm here at Fort Knox. We had a stormy and wet weathery day, and I'm just glad to be here. You can find me at mytrueroots.com. You can find me on Twitter at the same handle, and I'm just representing my family. I'm a part two Ike's kids after the atlases. <laughs> Well, yeah, hey, look, all I know is I wish True would send me some of that rain because my squash and my cucumber are just waiting to come on up. But we just need that little extra little bit of rain. So, you know, since it rains a lot in Florida, I would yeah. hope that maybe Ellen could send some rain or cry. True could send some rain to Tennessee. You know, we'll see. Um, we've had requests in the chat room for me to share pictures of my garden. So apparently I need to share some progress photos because I actually it's so funny. My brother-in-law's brother-in-law sounds weird like what do you, who is your brother-in-law like what relationship do you have to your brother-in-law's brother-in-law like is there a technical relation you know, know like is there a term for that i don't know what that is if anybody knows go ahead google it right now see what it is um put it in the chat room but my brother-in-law's <laughs> brother-in-law likes to mess with me because he he knows i he knows that i grow everything but he likes to mess with me like i don't like i just go to the store and buy things and i masquerade <laughs> like i buy them so like he'll make comments under my post like yeah we know it's your garden like he does that to me all the time so so just so we have receipts and people know like I literally yeah like a matter of fact I think Angela's gonna be on the next show I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask her to put pictures of her uh, garden up too because Angela Garden we actually talk more about gardening now than we do genealogy <laughs> which is so crazy. It's just so crazy. But chat room, thank you so much. Our yes. faithful are here. Denise Muhammad is in the house. Bernice Bennett. Hey, Golden Sabra. <laughs> Neff Hawthorne, who is our Ask Mariah. She's here early. Good. Look, look at you being on time, boo. All right. I see you. Noelle Hill, Kim, Wadi, my cousin, Raymond Reeves. Woo, woo. Reese Anderson is in the house. Lady Lau. She says, Nika, I want to see your garden. I need some inspiration, girl. Yes, look, if I grew up in the city, I just told y'all. I'm from Southern California, where that dirt is hard, where it never <laughs> rains in Southern California. If I could be down here growing some stuff, you can too. 
Uh, Karen Galloway's in the house. Let's see. Uh, Karen Royal Hay, who was just off the heels of a Georgetown 272 reunion. I don't know if you've been following that, but they had a gathering last weekend. I don't know if Karen knows I was paying attention. It was sure beautiful. Was. It yes. was gorgeous. It was so, or so gorgeous. Shelly Murphy is in the house. Get your timelines together. Uh, look at people are asking if I've grown ginger. No, I have not done that. Good. That would be something yeah, interesting. I think I this year I that. berries. Berries this year this year was my year of off color foods. So like I did purple sweet potatoes, purple mm -hmm. cabbage, orange bell peppers, uh black watermelon, yellow watermelon. I did all purple tomato uh, actually really more like pink tomatoes. I was doing all that kind of stuff. Lock Y'all about to have me, me and Nika do a show like how Snoop and Martha Stewart got going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, about, we about to make this money. Yeah, look, go on ahead. <laughs> hey, look, because I have a fear. I have a fear that that you know my my father in law taught me how to garden. Um, and he's like a depression gardener. Like he kind of feels like he's going to run out of stuff. Like he's always thinking he's going to run out of stuff. Mm -hmm. and so I overplant. So I feel like, oh, my tomatoes are not going to come in. Let me go get two more plants. Well, I already have 12. Like, do I really need two more <laughs> tomato plants? So yeah, it's, yeah, yes. So this is so funny. All right. So the topic of the evening is Florida, right? We are talking Florida, 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 right? I would say Florida. If we were talking to the people in Louisiana or, you know, if we were talking to Trick Daddy or Trina, right? Right, we were talking about right. Florida, right? Um, gotta keep I, it I, trail. Well, yeah, gotta keep it trail. And I already know Angela is like, who is Trick Daddy? Who is Trina? She does not know. She is our resident. I love Angela. She she brings us back to the old school because she's like, who are these people? I don't understand the pop culture references. You know, Nan, that's what you need to know. That's a, that is a band classic, Black college band classic. But let's talk about the people of color experience in Florida, right? Because it's multidimensional, right? Of course, we, when we're talking about the people of color experience, we've got to talk about the fact that Florida uh, was originally uh, discovered by Spain. In fact, the, the settlement area predates Jamestown, I mean, by like 100 years. In fact, I actually talked about this at Jamboree recently. You know, people always, because of course, next year's a big year. You know, it's it's the, you know, it's the anniversary, you know, the first right. documented, you know, enslaved people coming to the United States. But there were enslaved people already here. There were people of color already here living in what was considered, you know, Spanish Florida. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've got to bring that context in. We've got to talk about how the British then came, tore, tore the house down, made it theirs. Then the Spanish reclaimed it. You know, I mean, it was a whole lot. It was a whole lot of... <laughs> whole lot of just mm -hmm. like banging going on in Florida, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Absolutely. So let's talk let's talk people of color experience in Florida. What, you know, what was it like, right? I mean, because you know, we like I said, we oftentimes, especially as people of color researchers, we kind of like sort of like mold everything into like the 18th, 1800s and 1900s. Mm -hmm. We don't really ever talk about the 1700s and the 1600s and the 1500s. Um, which, you know, which which I mean, if they didn't happen, Ellen wouldn't be sitting in her house right now. She's in Florida. So so let's let's talk about that for a second. What do you guys have to chime in about about Trick Daddy's home state? <laughs> He's like, what? I think when you think about you Florida. You, can, you know I can't be serious when you say things like this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because that's what I think of. I think of the video. Like, it's so like, relevant, though. <laughs> no, it is. Uh, Ellen, I think you were saying something. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and Ellen was coming at all eloquent. And you just... <laughs> Like you totally broke game face. <laughs> oh, James. Anyway, um, when I think about Florida, I think about like like I think about Puerto Rico. It's a very porous history. Like depending on what time period and location, like North Florida is nothing like South Florida. The fact that the Keys are closer to Cuba than to Miami just blows my mind. I mean, maybe a lot of people know this, but when you start thinking about the localities and then the histories that are shaped around it. It's uh, pretty amazing. I mean, there's a lot of displacement, a lot of diaspora, mm -hmm. and I think those elements are really fundamental to the history of Florida and not to people's that, genealogies. And I yeah, was going to say, not only when we when we consider the 15th, 16th, 17th century, we need to look at how Spain was a colonial power, not okay. just in Florida, but in mm -hmm. Louisiana. Right. I have ancestors who lived in Spanish Louisiana. Um, and, and, just the, and, and the expanse that is not only Louisiana, but we can go further west. That's right. um, so we need to put Spain within its proper 
uh, colonial context as a massive superpower back then uh, before they get usurped. Um, mm -hmm. But when I think of Florida, um, I'm also looking at, as Ellen had, had hinted, um, you have a massive trade coming up from the Caribbean that predates uh, uh, you know, the British. And we need to examine that and what it means for people of color. Uh, we can talk about the illegal slave trade that came up um, mm -hmm. and, and, and how that just expands on uh, today. But, but it's been a div diverse place. You have not only African descent, of course, native descent. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot to, that we can touch upon, but we, we need to consider Spain as a colonial power. Yeah, and, and, to, and to, to kind of go off of what Ter Teresa just said, I think that the thing that you have to remember about places like Florida and uh, Alabama, where I have my roots in Louisiana and whatnot, is that it's not really the, as much the southern United States as we think of it today. It's also the, the kind of the northern ring, the northern border of the Caribbean. From a, from a cultural standpoint. And you'll see that quite a bit um, in, in what research I have done on, on early Florida history, um, even going into post-Civil War years. I mean, you're finding people who are, you know, as we would say, you know, African-American, you know, is the term we use today, but the names, you know, Estevez and all, all these different type of, you know, the, 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 the Spanish uh, influence in the names and, and as well as in the culture, as well as the African, as well as the indigenous, as well as, you know, that all plays a, a vital role in how, uh, the native Floridian population, um, and by native I mean those born there uh, at that point, mm -hmm. um, how they how they kind of see themselves. Uh, something else I think that often is not discussed as as much as it should be is that is the fact that you also had people running away from slavery going south into Florida. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in in my mm -hmm. family, um, I don't know of anybody that um, that 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 occurred in occur, occurred with. However, my family was in such proximity to Florida. Uh, that it wouldn't surprise me if I did have somebody. I've never found it. My family kind of came um, a little later on to that area, but it would not surprise me at all if if, uh, if I had anybody who had ran south to, to Spanish Florida seeking refuge. And, and we get into this history of hearing about the Seminoles and all this type of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's something that, that definitely needs to be discussed. Absolutely, which we which we will touch on that when we get into the resources area of uh of the show. And I think the other thing about Florida too is because of its proximity to the Caribbean, right? Even after that that slavery time period, you still had a lot of migration from, you know, Puerto Rico and, you know, Trinidad, Bahamas, Cuba, Cuba. you know, and that's why though, and even Haiti, that's why you have little Haiti and and um mm -hmm. locations like that is because, you know, it 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 became a, a, you know, sort of a Caribbean melting pot, so to speak, for the United States in a, in a way that's different than I think other coastal cities, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've got people from those populations in, in New York, but I don't think they quite solidified the way that they did in Florida. You know, I, I just don't think it's the same. Well, it's a closer, geographically, it's a closer, it's more recognizable uh, environment. I, I, I was gonna add, Reese brought up a good point in the chat room, and when we're looking at this early period too, you have to talk about the forced export of native folks right. as well right. from places like Florida and elsewhere, even New York, uh, to to the Caribbean. The Caribbean, yeah. And even further than that, mm -hmm. some went to Madagascar. You know, so, but but we need to consider that as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking records. Um, in Florida right now, typically, you know, this is the thing, when we do these state specific shows, right, you gotta rem remind yourself that when we're talking about the state specific shows, we're, we're assuming you already know that you have federal records. Right? So typically <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not gonna be sitting on here talking about the US census. I mean, because we all know we have that available to us, right? But you've got um, you've got a nice amount of records online for Florida. Um, at least I feel, you know, um, based off of what I found for people in my own family and stuff like that. Um, but let's talk about how local records are organized in Florida, right? Um, you've got the clerk of court, um, and based off of what I've seen, now I haven't gone to do on-site research in Florida, but based off of what I can tell, based on doing my own research, it seems like there's only one clerk there versus Tennessee, where you have 125, and you have to try to figure out who's got which records. 
um, following that, and, and of course we have to talk about local research because too many of us as, all, as, as genealogists now focus so much on researching online so we never really factor in having to go um, to locations and research on site. Right, we're 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 super on the computer. Like we're not even thinking about the fact that we need to go to a particular place. Um, right. Once you move from there, you know you've got your county courts, right? You got your circuit courts, and then you've got your court of appeals, and then you have your state supreme court. This structure um, is really key, especially when you're doing research when it comes to slavery, right? Because if somebody um, you know sued a family member or whoever it was. Um, and, and the case got appealed and appealed and appealed, then of course you would have to be able to follow that chain structure of those court systems to be able to follow the case, right? So this is similar to other states, but you know, just go back to like the Tennessee episode we did and, and Melissa Parker broke down <laughs> how you have to kind of learn the court structure in the state of Tennessee um, and how it's different than other states, even though we're all part of the same union, right? So I just want to bring these things up um, and just, just remind, Did you hit the mic? Sorry, Nika. Sorry, that's okay. It was me. Okay. Um, you still have to think about federal records, right? Your censuses. You're still thinking about Freedmen's Bureau. You're still thinking about, um, if you're, especially if you're talking about, uh, you know, five civilized tribes, and you're talking about the Seminole Nation. You're talking about limited limited stuff with with the Dawes roles with that community, right? Those are all federal records. But in Florida, we're also talking about state census records, which are great because those provide you a window into families and, and different groups of people outside of the federal census. You're still talking about uh, vital records, right? Which when it comes to Florida and they're online, they've got some great stuff like marriages. They've got, uh, I think they've got divorces as well. Um, and then some of the county clerks are awesome. Oh, wait till we get to some of the county clerks because, oh, we got some good links for you <laughs> from the county clerks. There basically is a Tom Leatherwood equivalent in Florida. If you go back to the Tennessee episode, we were praising, we we're singing the praises of Tom Leatherwood, who actually cannot be reelected as the clerk of court for Memphis, for Shelby County now, which mm -hmm. we're very sad about. Um, but there is a Tom Leatherwood equivalent um, in Florida. We'll be sharing the link for that person later, meaning a person that cares about the whole state and preserves things. Um, so you've got uh, you've got vital records, right? You're searching out those things. Um, I'm just trying to <laughs> trying to keep in context with everything that, that we're talking about, so folks don't you know don't get super tunnel vision and and don't think that uh, they don't have to search out those aspects. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, let me see. There was some. There's a question somebody asked in the chat room. I want to be sure. And if anybody wants to fill in, feel free to come off mute because um, I need to scroll back up to see it. Uh... Uh, also, one thing that I thought was really uh, cool about uh, research I have done in Florida is that there. Uh, if you go on, and again, this is something we, that, that a site that comes up you know fairly often on Black Pogen, uh, the Internet Archive, archive.org. Uh, one thing that I was very, very impressed to see actually was just how many um, of the uh, proceedings of the Florida um, African Methodist um, Episcopal Church are actually online um, on, our, on the Internet Archive, on archive.org. If you just go on there and type in, um, you know, uh, African Methodist uh, Church, Florida, they'll pop right up. Um, and there are, are a number of them from, from a number of years. And if you kind of play with the, uh, with the search term a little bit, you'll find, you'll, you'll find um, a lot of a lot of them actually going back to uh, the earliest ones I found go back to uh, about the late 1870s I think somewhere in there um, and go come basically right on down through the 20th century I was very very impressed with that um, and, and so you're not only getting um, actual speeches and whatnot from local ministers but you're learning about the local churches um, you know how are they responding to um, to lynchings and other things of that nature um, the, the civic engagement as well as some of them do contain uh, the list of some of the members, you know, at least prominent members anyway, of local churches. Um, so if you know you have relatives who may be a part of that denomination, um, I highly suggest that you check out in that archive if you're, if you're researching in Florida. Okay, okay. I, I think I found the question. Um, so someone was asking, <laughs> were the Seminoles really Seminoles? <laughs> You always hear that. Dun, and, dun, dun. And, and, what I, and what I have to say about that is go back to November of 2017 and watch the Five Civilized Tribes episode. Mm -hmm. That's what I have to say about that. 
was a good episode. It was a great episode. But the thing is, the Sibinoles are kind of a merging of different populations and groups. They're sort of um, a unique set of folks amongst the five civilized tribes. Um, and they sort of have a, a interesting history. Um, they've got a very interesting history, which is why that question is always raised. So we talked about that in depth on the Five Civilized Tribe show. We could spend the whole rest of the episode talking about Wait, the Seminoles. I, I want to add can that. I, can can I, I'm sorry, Nika, can I, can I do that one more time? It was kind of fun to me. Sure, yes, go ahead. All right, wait, y'all ready? Yes, dun, we're ready. Dun, dun. <laughs> okay, <I'm done. laughs> I wanted it, to add that uh, Angela basically said that the word Seminole comes from the word Simaroon, which is like maroon. Uh, so, okay. Okay. And which is says it's used to describe one who has strayed. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miss Angela. I'm yeah, I know. Here. You see how she just slid up in the she slid up in the in the in the chat room, not yeah. in the DMs, mm -hmm. but she slid up in the chat room and just or yeah. or as we say, self emancipated themselves. Yes, yes. Yeah. So she said she's she's weighing in. We'll just assume she's got a little boxer at the bottom of the screen. The Seminoles or Los Simarones were referring to the red stick warriors who were really creek. I tried to do it in her voice. Hopefully she <laughs> it um, it me, me reading it like her. So the creeks were divided into two groups, the upper creeks and the lower creeks. And it sounds like this. And from what I remember, the Seminoles were the lower creeks um, that separated themselves off. But Angela can can uh, correct me um, with the that. The upper and the lower. <laughs> yeah, the upper and the lower. I know it's like middle, middle Tennessee in East and West Tennessee. There is no central Tennessee. Don't ever say that. Don't ever say that. Um, so yeah, that's why people, there's always a bit of debate as to whether or not they're really Indian. They're really Native American. Um, <laughs> every answer is in Miss Angela's voice. Yes, every answer is in her voice. I'm like, I don't know why she's not on the panel, but okay. Um, the Cimarronists were encountering man, uh, many of the Africans who had left Georgia and the Carolinas. So that's something we also alluded to. There were, there were there was a preponderance of a lot of runaway slaves in Florida, right? Mm -hmm. You have to think about it. That was like, that was kind of like the wild West in, 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 in a sense, right? Because, you know, mm -hmm. at some point, you know, the, the Florida panhandle, that all, that all extended into Louisiana and that was under Spanish control. That wasn't part of the United States. So mm -hmm. that's why you have a preponderance of, of the same culture in Mobile as you would in maybe Pensacola, as you would in New Orleans, you know, and, and especially in East West Feliciana, those floor, where they're called the Florida parishes in Louisiana, duly named because they were once part of Florida. So um, that 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 taps into that. Um, Angela's following up. The Second Seminole War was basically fought involving over uh, was fought in, uh, over runaways. It was over the runaways. Um, she said they fought together, although they kept in two distinct groups. Hmm. This just goes back to <laughs> this goes back to show we did in November. Um, all right, so I'm going to start spouting out uh, resources because, of course, the conversation in the chat room, we want to descend into talking about Seminoles for the rest of the time. I hate that, but this is what happens when people bring up the subject. So um, let me go ahead and get my screen ready because literally I can take the rest of the show um, sharing all of the resources that we have for you guys when it comes to right. Florida. Um, our resident uh, Actually, she is a resident Floridian. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, she is. Um, it was not able to be with us tonight. Um, so we are trying to cover for her as well as trying to make sure you guys get something. Karen Galloway mentioned she wants to know, what does Florida mean? It's based off of uh, the Pascua Florida, which means the Feast of Flowers. And it was named that um, by... Ponce de Leon in 1513. So that is to answer your question, Miss Karen Galloway. All right. So the first um, resource I'm going to share with you and true. Do you, are you okay putting this stuff in the chat room? Yes, I am. All right. Cause, cause she, I had to get her, I got to get her brief because child is going to be, it's, it's, it's links on links on links. So you just want me to just go ahead and yeah, just go ahead and start right, and start posting. You. Yeah, she's got me. All right. So the first one we've got here is Florida Memory. Um, and this is more than 300,000 individual records from select collections housed in the State Library and Archives of Florida. Most of the collections on this page have been digitized in their entirety. So it's 300,000 individual records. 
right? You see some of the stuff that's on this page. They've got maps, they've got folk life, early constitutions. Remember, this is based off of this. You got to remember, this is just like Louisiana, right? A lot of their policies, the way the government is structured, everything is going to be very similar to what you would see in Louisiana, right? In other Gulf Coast states that were, were formerly a part of Spain. Um, they've got the Spanish land grants, right? Voter rolls for the state of Florida, which are key, right? We talked about specialized records. That's that's in a pivotal time period, 1867 to 1868, which is during Reconstruction. This is when the 13th Amendment has just has just been passed and African-American men have been given the right to vote. So that's pivotal to the populations that we're talking about. Of course, we're not talking about this. We don't care about Confederate <laughs> pension. <out of> <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I I love that. You have a question. <laughs> oh, you've got a question. I, I, I have a question. Um, yes. How, how much? How much is this site costing me? <laughs> this site is free ninety nine. Free ninety nine. <laughs> Free 99, are you out of your mind? Yes, it is. Florida Memory is free. And if you are not using it, you need to, need to, need to. And Shelly, I'm just going to tell you, she's in the chat room shouting out the archives and whatnot. Child, you provided some of these links. Stop sharing the links before we get to the links. Because <laughs> I know she's going to do it. Because she can't hold herself back. She should have been on the panel tonight. All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Next, next link that we have here for you, Florida Department of State Division of Library and Information Services has an African American bibliography. You're probably wondering why in the world would I need a bibliography when I'm researching online? Well, some of these books and resources can be key for you when researching in Florida. Some of the stuff may, you know, um, may be dated, but some of the information, it may not be available anywhere else online. They've got a lot of different little things. Um, and, you know, a lot of these are links, um, but some of them are books. And so I highly suggest you check this out. They also have uh, bibliographies for other different, just different things in Florida, things like Native Americans of Florida. They have a whole section on Rosewood. If you don't know about Rosewood, Google. Um, British heritage, French heritage, Cuban heritage, the Seminole War, since we were talking about Seminoles, right? Just scroll through this whole list. It's a, it's a decent sized list, but don't, don't rule it out because you think that it's old and dated. Um, some of the things that I have found um, when it comes to researching my family and researching for other people, you know, you can't find them in other places other than a book that may be out of print that you can get on eBay for $3.99. So, um, you know, so don't, don't rule that out. So that is a uh, Florida Department of State Division of Library and Information Services, the African American History Bibliography. All right, another link um, in this one, care of Shelley Murphy, is the Meek Eaton Black Archives at Florida A&M. And you know, nobody in my family calls it Florida A&M. It is FAMU. You. <laughs> in my family. And there are a number of different things here. Um, that it would with regard to this particular archives. Shelly is huge when talking about uh, archives um, at the university level. I think a lot, and I think she's correct, a lot of people don't recognize um, what is available in universities. I think people get tunnel vision and they think that everything is available online. So be sure to check out what's available. You can look at the history of the archives and it talks about in 1971, Florida legislature mandated the creation of a repository to quote, serve the state by collecting and preserving source material on and about African-Americans from ancient to present times. Isn't that like a unique and kind of wide <laughs> mandate. <laughs> it's like, okay, where? Uh, mandate we gave birth to what would later become the Black Archives Research Center and Museum. The center was founded in 1976 at FAMU uh, by history professor Dr. James N. Eaton. And they've got, let's see, 500,000. Oh, Jesus. Did you guys wow. see that? Wow. Look at that. Due to the generous contributions from the public, the center's holdings consist of more than 500,000 individual archival records and more than 5,000 individual museum artifacts. And you mm -hmm. notice they don't have a big flashy website, right? Mm -hmm. This is not, you know, bells and whistles. There's nobody coming out doing a dance and saying, hey, how are you doing? No. Right. This is very bare bones. They've got reference requests. They've got um, the archives themselves. And here are some of the holdings. Look at this Afro and an Afro American Central Life Insurance Company's collection. Ooh, so that's that's getting your policy right. Look at this. Uh, Alonzo Jack Gaither Black uh, College Football Collection. And the fact that his last name is 
Gaither means he maybe has ties to Maryland because there are a bunch of Gaithers there. Carrie Meek, African Americans in Congress collection. They've got a, a FAMU University of Col College of Law collection, hospital collection. Do you know somebody in your, in your family that was at the FAMU hospital? Got to consider that. A 4-H collection. There's a whole bunch of stuff. National Negro Home Demonstration Agents Collection. Goodness gracious, there's a lot here. So take a look, see perhaps maybe there may be something there um, that you can use. All right, so our next, and true, you are, you are the bomb because you're keeping up with me. I'm trying to give you time because I don't want to yeah, talk to you. Fine. <laughs> <Too quickly. laughs> All right. So here's another hidden gem, right? This is the Black Archives. They collect and preserve the rapidly vanishing material that reflects the African-American experience in Miami-Dade County. And they were founded in 1977 by Dr. Dorothy Jenkins Fields as a nonprofit organization. And over the years, the collection has grown and the Black Archives is now a national resource for history of the 19th and 20th centuries, providing a rich repository of materials that are used by scholars, students, teachers, and the media, right? So you can go and attempt to search the archives online. We'll pop that little page up. And of course, you know, this is, this is the thing I always tell people, don't discriminate on the site, right? Because you don't know what's there. So, okay, everybody pick a letter. Where are we going? T. Where are we going? <laughs> okay, C. We're going to click C. I think that's what I heard. All right. So we've got different papers here. And look at the, look at the recent dates on these, you guys. Mm -hmm. Right? These are great. Chapman Family Papers, Gwendolyn Sawyer Cherry. Let's see. What is she talking? Oh, no, wait. Let me go back to the civil rights history. What's in that? You know, that literally called out to me because that's the first thing I'm thinking about is uh, civil rights history stuff. So it says civil rights collection consists of material relating to the civil rights movement from 1933 to 2003 collected by staff of the archives. The uh, materials uh, document assimilations, black astronauts, prominent black individuals in local, state, and national government, blacks in the military. So it sounds like they were just, hey, anything of, of prominence that we could find okay. that documents that experience, we're going to do that. This is really cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a great, this is a great resource. This is the Black Archives that documents Miami-Dade County. All right. So we're going to move on from there. Um, and of course, this is a, a area near and dear to my heart because this is what I went to school for newspapers. This is care of the University of Florida, George A. Smathers Library, Florida Digital Newspapers. And so they've got um, it's anything, many things that are part of the Florida Newspaper Project, right? With the exception of the East Florida West Gazette, uh, East Florida Gazette in the 1780s and a small press at Fernandia in 1817, Florida had no colonial newspapers. That's key. See, so notice they told you that on the front page. They didn't let you come in here searching and thinking that you were going to find a colonial newspaper <laughs> and you were not going to find that, right? And so uh, even in the immediate aftermath of secession in um, recession in the 1821, only a few newspapers uh, served Florida. Um, and so they've got all of this stuff digitized here. And there's 2.6 million pages from all over Florida in this archive. So be sure to check that out. All right, and of course, here's the thing, and let me come back on camera because because I see people doing it already. <laughs> we are not Jesus, we are not Mary, and we are not Joseph. We are not going to present every single link you want us to present because we just don't have the time to do that. And Google works for you. So if you have resources, and unfortunately, you can't post links in the chat because you don't have the crown, <laughs> <laughs> do what Tyrone Craft is doing. He's saying, don't forget Bethune Cookman, Florida Memorial, Edward Waters College is yes, we are advocating for the use of universities. If we haven't said that, I will say that now. We are advocating for the use of universities. Please utilize their resources. But we're going through some of our hidden gems. These are some of the things that we use, our group uses a lot, and we found um valuable. That's not saying that Bethune Cookman is not valuable. We just may not. We just, we just may not patronize it as much as you maybe want us to. So um, let me see. Hold on. Um, okay, we did newspapers. All right, um, you skipped one, True. Oh, I did. I see you highlighting. Oh. <laughs> like you skipped one. You skipped over a link because it's sort of the same. Was? Yeah, it's sort of oh. a repeat. That's probably why you were like, wait a minute, yes. I don't understand. Like, why are we doing this one? Okay, so going back. Um, all right, so going back to University of Florida, um, 
and the George A. Smathers libraries. Here's an amazing, this, I think this is probably one of the most weighty yeah. things that we're, we're going to share tonight, um, which is a Florida history resources, digital collections around the state. And it's a, just a ton of links that they have available. Um, you know, they've got old Florida maps. They've got um, the Sanborn fire insurance. We talked about those maps on the mapping show we had maybe a few episodes ago. Um, and um, it's a ton of stuff here. St. Augustine Historical Research Library. Of course, St. Augustine was the first sort of, you know, a settlement um, in uh, the Florida, uh, what became Florida, um, which predated, remember I said, predated the areas to the north that we swear was the first settlement ever here, but it was not. Um, if you're curious about that, check out an amazing um, documentary that PBS did on Spanish Florida. It came out, um, was that late last year or early yeah. this year, you guys? Last year, I think. Last year. Yeah. Yeah. I think it I think it was last year, but it was really, 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 really good. Um, so don't forget about this. We've got uh it's like I said, Florida History Resources. This is part of University of Florida. Ooh, look at this. They have a whole Zora Neale Hurston section. Cool. They've got a uh, Florida writer section. This is actually pretty cool. Uh colonial resources, civil war stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, and matter of fact, um, here's a Mary McLeod Bethune uh, guide to her papers. Right. Um, that in DC to her museum there. Yes. Yes. Oh, All I right. I know about that one. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. All right. More links. We've got Florida History Online. Remember, I said don't hate on the website because you don't know what's here. People, people be like, the site's not together. Okay. Well, just bear with us, right? Here are maps. A lot of this is maps, photos, a lot of different stuff. They've got things going into Florida and the Civil War. Um, just check this out. This is kind of sort of a hodgepodge. This is um, the, uh, let's see, this is UNF. Um, gosh, I'm getting lost on the links here. I am too. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's University of North Florida. I'm sorry. The family of Florida history online. Because me and True are in the same document. So we're trying to, I'm trying to keep, she's pink. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not on the pink, the pink lines that she's on. Um, check this out. Like I said, it's a hodgepodge. You may or may not find something there that's useful for you. Um, digital collections here from the University of South Florida libraries. They have a genealogy resources collection, which includes marriages, naturalizations, and more for the Tampa or Hillsboro area. Um, I have a ton of family. Actually, my family sort of pocketed into Tampa and Fort Lauderdale. They really only live in those two places. I don't know <laughs> why. Um, but uh, this digital collection is great. There's a lot of stuff here, um, you know, especially when it comes to Caribbean folks. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Look at these naturalizations where they've got post these pictures of people. Oh, cool. I wonder if wow. folks even. Ooh, wow! Look at That's ooh, neat. look at Hilario. Go ahead, Hilario, with your little whip to the side right there, <laughs> baby. Look at all these. Look at this. This is actually pretty, pretty awesome. All right, let's look. Let's look. Look at Nicolas. Oh, cool! Mm -hmm. And these are and and look at this. You can print or you can do an image download. That's pretty cool, especially if you have somebody. Um, Somebody who may have immigrated there. Next um, episode, I'm gonna have my hair like that. Oh, you're gonna wear it like that? That's yeah, great. Next episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at this. Nineteen thousand matching titles for wow. this. And in the naturalization area, there are eight hundred and three records of naturalizations mm -hmm. um, that they have for Tampa and Hillsborough counties. Um, you've also got eleven thousand five hundred and twenty-six marriages. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and mm -hmm. look at this marriage of record Acosta, uh, Francisco Amorisi, and Mendoza Sarete Maria de Reg Regla Rodriguez. Married um, November 20th, 1895. And this is an actual um, certificate. Mm. Mm. Pretty cool. Wow. That's pretty cool, you guys. I didn't realize, mm -hmm. hey. I'm like, go, Tony. Actual documents, cool. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say that. That's actually pretty stinking awesome. All right, so um, we've got that. Still not done. Still not done. Of course, everybody's um, throwing in links. Color Town is good. Let's see. I don't really know what they're talking about. Looking for turpentine camps history or industry in Florida. So people are mentioning that. Interesting video on Colored Town. 
Um, what about Color Town and Overtown Miami? I need to do. I need to research more on that. I would imagine you probably would be probably providing you resources to look into it. There's a. Um, I just want to mention this. I don't remember the title right now, but there is a documentary on. It's on Amazon Prime uh, on the history of Overtown, and it's got about twenty two chapters or something, and it goes through. It's really it's really good to watch. So it, is it you're saying it's like an episodic show or is it like it's one? like they yeah. have a series of interviews with a historian and then it just kind of stops. And then they then they do a um, they just go they move on to a next chapter and then it'll be either the location or the or the time period shifts a little bit so they can focus in on uh, the history of Overtown. Is it called the Black Miami? Yeah, that's it. OK. Yeah. Hold on, let me let me bring that up so people can see it. That's actually on my Amazon Prime list. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I gotta put it on mine. Exactly. Um, yeah. All right. So we'll I'll put the link in the chat so True doesn't have to do that. It's called The Black Miami. Yes, American Pimp. You know what? Clearly, <laughs> customers who also watch this also, yeah, which I've seen American Pimp to stop talking about me. I did. Um, I can quote that movie. Isn't that horrible? Okay. Um, also, Pimp's Up, Hose Down. Little things you can talk about. <laughs> Never in my life did I think we'd be quoting that. <laughs> Little things. Matter of fact, I've got to come on camera. I actually watched that with my mother. Really? Oh, yeah. This is a drink conversation. <laughs> My, yeah, I was going to say, if you watch Red Table Talk with Jada Pinkett Smith and her mother and Willow, they had a whole conversation this week about sex. That's sort of how me and my mom are about these topics. And yes, I did watch Pimps Up, Hose Down with my mom. Black <laughs> progen after the credits. <laughs> after dark. Yeah. After, after dark. dark. <laughs> after dark. All right, we've got the Florida African American his uh, uh, sorry Florida African American Heritage Preservation uh, Network, um, and this particular site um, it's got a lot of different stuff. Look at them having their little app. Um, and so what it is, it's a professional organization organized in 2001 um, by the John Gilmore Riley Center Museum. It serves as an informational and technical assistance resource in response to a growing interest in, the preserver in preserving Florida's African-American culture, that of the di African diaspora, and that of other related ethnically diverse historic resources globally. The Florida Black uh, Heritage Trail Guide is a publication produced by the Fon Hepin you know, I'm shortening their acronym, um, the details, the microcosm of African-American landmarks and legacies that exist in various locations throughout the state of Florida. Though much of Florida's African-American history has been lost, this publication demonstrates a growing interest in documenting and preserving all that remains. And so they've got a list of events and different things. So be sure to take a look. They've got a digital archive. Of course, that usually is where all the researchers go. Um, and that exists um, mostly, I think it's at the museum. So be sure to check that out and look, look at all the little museums that they have that are all over the place in Florida. Look at this. So these might have, gosh, I keep scrolling. Local history. Yeah. Local history, right? Nice these place. are great places to go. All right. Um, so we hit Fawn Pin. All right. City of Tallahassee. If you were looking in Tallahassee, right? Um, they've got city-owned cemetery. So you've got basically a find a grave. Um, <laughs> Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> the chat room, somebody's asking about this about the strip joint. <laughs> I don't know where the strip clubs are in Miami. I've never been. Um, hilarious. Okay, going back to some oh, yeah. fans. I, I love <laughs> exactly. our viewers. Yeah, the view our viewers are hilarious. Um <laughs> did somebody just ask about shadows? Oh god. They did. They did. And I don't know anything about that place. Um we're just going. I'm I've died. Literally, I'm in the city owned cemeteries right now. Okay. Um, here's a index of uh burials that are in the city cemeteries that are owned by the city of Tallahassee, right? So we are um don't forget, right? Some cities have, they're still, the, some of the cemeteries are still owned by the city, right? So don't necessarily just jump to find a grave to try to find burials, especially if you have family that were, uh, you know, lived or died in Tallahassee. Be sure to check out this website from the city of Tallahassee that's got um, records available. You can click search, put your, put your names in, your combinations um, to try to get. Now it's not going to be fancy, but they will provide you a map of where to find the graves. And it's 21,000 records that are in this particular system. Oh, That's a good number. 
Mm. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a we, lot. We, we, I just want to. I just want to highlight one thing that every like link, it, like you're hitting them with twenty thousand, five hundred thousand. You know, y'all y'all <laughs> getting some y'all getting some resources tonight. I'm just letting people know. I, don't, I think they're sleeping on us tonight. <laughs> I hope they aren't, cause cause Tom Leatherwood of, of, of Florida, is, yeah, the Tom Leatherwood of Florida has has come a uh, come across. And I remember I told you guys these these websites may not be bells and whistles. You aren't gonna get a nice little video of a little girl with her dad in a tent with, by the fire uh, for Father's Day on these. You are gonna get just literally winks. So here is the Tom Leatherwood of Florida. I have I have dubbed this Alachua County clerk. JK Jess Irby, we need to go ahead and send him cards, tweets, whatever we need to. Look at this site. This is the county clerk of Alachua County. Okay. He has got marriage records, right, from 1837 to 1973. He also has probate records, partial deed indexes up to June 12th of 2018, partial mortgage indexes up to June 12th of 2018. There are transcriptions. Look, he even asked for volunteers. Look at this. We're making an attempt to transcribe and index our online document images. Look at that. And he asked for help and you can volunteer. Look at that. They've got county maps for census years all here. They've also got online deed records right? Will records, all of this stuff, plat maps, historic, there's a whole historic photograph collection. He's mm. looking out for you when it comes to Alaska County. And, and I love how he calls the ancient records. <laughs> 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 They're called I mean, ancient. ancient. Oh my gosh. So uh, a person said, I'm overwhelmed with all the resources. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> child. And we ain't done yet. We Give ain't done We're giving yet. it to you. We're giving it to you. We're we're close, and we're coming to some of our. This is what I call our special sauce of Black Pro Gen, because there are some some things that I think a lot of us haven't been paying attention to, and it, it kind of ties in DNA. Look at little Elmer and his website. <laughs> this is <laughs> Madison County. If you have ties to Madison County, Florida, um, and uh, you want to try to find information on your ancestors there, hit up Mr. Elmer. And ask him if you can come to his library. He will allow you the ability to come. And they have a little a group on Facebook for Elmer's Genealogy Corner. He's got books for sale, books at the corner. You can look look at his little library. He has put it on the website. Look at this. We got a little rocking horse up here for the people. I don't think he pulls. I don't think he pulls that down. But this is his <laughs> little li look at this little library. He's got Ooh, all well, sorts really? of stuff. It's so cute. It is so cute. And so they've got. He's got national obituaries. He's got all sorts of. Look at his little website. I wonder how much traffic he gets on this little thing. But don't hate on little Elmer. Um, <laughs> Karen Galloway is cracking up at me calling him that in the chat room. I don't know why I think of Elmer. I think of a little man. I don't know why. He might be like six feet tall and I'm just not paying attention. So that is a resource for Madison County. If you, you know, and that's the thing. He's so, this is like how genealogy used to be. Remember the, how you used to be where you, people used to have these little websites and you would send mm -hmm. them an email and can you help me reach out to Elmer if you have ties to Madison I County or perhaps. Much. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I met my mentor, and he's still sm snail mailing to this day at like 80 something years old. Is off of one of those for Bullet County, Alabama. Right. <laughs> and girl, it's he like got how many years later? <laughs> girl, he got look. He got his Geo Cities. He moved from Geo Cities to a dot com, baby. You better give Elmer his little credit, girl. Yes. Girl, that's how I learned how to do websites with GeoCities, hand code, and HTML back in the olden days. All right, moving right. forward, Hillsborough County, which is Tampa area, um, the Public Library Cooperative Digital Collections. They have a super rich digital collection for Tampa and Hillsborough County um, in Florida Historical and Genealogical Resources, and it includes funeral home records. Yay. Mm -hmm. For Af and then uh, there's African American oral history from Florida. This is this is great. This is an amazing, amazing collection of resources. So um, let's just click history and genealogical. We're gonna browse and see what they have. 415 different images. Look at this agricultural censuses. Look at this funeral home record. Ooh, let's click that, y'all. Look at this, Adela Costa, Puerto Rico. Uh, look at that, right? Mm -hmm. Color. She they marked it as colored. And they've got her occupation and her death date and her birth date. And then they also date a funeral, birthplace, Puerto Rico. 
place of death. They've got the address. You can plug that into Google Maps. Look at this. You've got parents' names also listed on here and where she was buried. This is, as I mentioned, this is the Hillsborough County Public Library Cooperative Digital Collections. Um, and yeah, funeral home collections are the bomb and digital collections here are good. So, ooh, yes, all right. So something else we're gonna touch on, here's some more secret um, secret sauce, black progen, stuff that's super under the radar. African slaves found peace in Key West. Did you know oh. this? Nine Africans and 286 others are believed to be entombed alone in Higgs Beach on Key West shores. The dead were casualties of the transatlantic trip aboard three American owned slave ships intercepted by the US Navy in 1860. 18. 60. Yep. Right. Right. This is, this is, right. Yes, this is illegal this at this is point. Bad story too. Right. The vessels were heading to Cuba to sell their 1,432 passengers into labor. Rescued from slavery, the Africans spent three months in Key West being cared for by local doctors with supplies purchased by the U.S. Marshal and donated by an accepting um, citizenry. About one, uh, 1,100 survived and were eventually sent back to Africa in a dangerous voyage. But here's the thing. We're talking about DNA in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Notice what they said. The people were here mm -hmm. for three months. That's right. Now you have to imagine. Plenty of time. That's plenty of time. <laughs> right. For somebody to sell their royal oats. Mm -hmm. More than one time. We don't know who was working in the hospital caring for the people. You know, it could have been a situation like it was that chocolate where a man couldn't speak the language. Mm. And they still were together, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a whole lot of folks to house in the area, right? Yeah. And that's the Wait. thing Angela Angela said is that a year after the Cotilde. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is and that, and mm -hmm. I almost feel like we need to maybe we need to put this in our kitty for next year. We need to have a conversation about the illegal slave trade well, and documented exactly. instances where right. you know ships and things were brought in later. I'm, well, I'm gonna I, I, I wanted to add here, um in Wendy Wilson Falls book. Uh, Memories of Madagascar, she has uh, a whole discussion of the illegal slave trade that came up uh, through Cuba. And one of the things I was able to tell her, and I've told Derek Primo over here, Ellen, um, Spain was involved in the slave trade to Madagascar as late as 1840. Those slaves were imported into Cuba. From Cuba, they... They went to all three, think of it, all three Spanish islands, and then probably Louisiana, Georgia. And I think it, you know, now in retrospect, here we are, so-called, if we want to say recolonizing, like mm -hmm. Central Florida. Um, mm -hmm. but, but there's a whole history there that needs to be discussed, and that is the illegal slave trade. It's legal and illegal because right. Spain kept having people had licenses to keep bringing people yep. if they made an argument for it, even though the trade right. was supposedly over. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing stuff. Well, yeah. one, one thing I was going to say, Mika, since you brought up the DNA aspect as well, is that we didn't really touch on that as much um, tonight. But one thing I do know is that there have been some studies showing that folks, particularly from coastal regions, and I know Florida is definitely one of them, um, when they're doing the DNA test, a lot of people have found that they're actually more uh, genetically uh, African than previously thought uh, in some of the latest research. Um, so, so that's something else that I think that needs further exploring um, as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know, that's the thing. As I mentioned, three months is enough time for something to go down before somebody goes back home. Mm -hmm. So you you got to factor, uh, you totally got to factor these things in. And, and uh, someone talked about uh, colonial records. I know that some of that stuff, especially in Spanish Florida, lives in Spain. And you have to go to Spain to see some of those things, depending on the, the location, you know, and, and whether or not records were destroyed in different battles, wars, different things just, like that. You Go ahead, Ellen. I just want to say to just recommend looking at Paris, the... Uh, uh, MCU.es, which is the the arc the network of archives in Spain is digitizing records and keeps uploading more and more and more. I mean, it's it's an incredible collection. Not, of course, not everything is there, but it's surprising how much you can pull. You can pull out um, service records for military people. 
But you also have to remember that there's a split between the colonial center, the, the colonial center and then the place that's being colonized because usually those records are not the records that go back to Spain. The people who are at the upper level, those records do go back. So you'll find like urban militias, for instance, not in there. It's just a split, but, but it's, it's def definitely worth a look for all kinds of documentation across time. Mm -hmm. Aha, uh -huh. okay, I see it. Thank you, because uh, I was over here getting my paras on, not paras. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, I want to I want to recommend a um a book too, if that's all right. Yeah, um, I have uh, two sorry? more links to share outside okay. of this one for uh the um Portal de Archivos mm -hmm. Españoles, which is what Ellen was just referring to. Um, and let's see, Portal de Archivos Españoles. Españoles. I think Ellen was able to uh, find documentation for my. I believe fourth great grandfather who came over on the Royal Decree. Okay. He was a government official. So there's a lot of stuff you can find. Yes. And Google Translate will help you. That's right. I think it also has a, there's a, a small amount of English interface on there. But ultimately, you have to read the documents and, you know, the documents in Spanish. Okay. Uh, moving forward. Um, this is these are more resources of course if you're in the chat room you see people sharing stuff as well florida keys if you have visit visit florida website they've got um florida keys history and african-american landmarks and sites um things like bahama village um bethel ame um a lot of different little spots that you can go to in key west that have a tie to um african um american history and the african diaspora um, so that is there as well. And then here is a little secret gem that I managed to pull up last year. So let me let me game you guys up real quick. <laughs> so if you have never heard of Negro Fort, let me tell you about this right now. I see Ellen writing it down. <laughs> so I was minding my own business looking at my DNA results last year. And I had a DNA match that literally had all four grandparents and themselves born in Trinidad and Tobago. And I was like, okay, maybe this is a transatlantic slave trade. Maybe it isn't. This person's family did not get, you know, uh, stateside until like 20 years ago. Wow. They also matched me, they, in addition to me, like seven other people. We all share DNA and only one person had DNA tied back to Trinidad and Tobago. All the rest of us were mainland United States. So I was like, you know what? Was there like a situation with like loyalists or something mm -hmm. in Florida. Yes. And I was like, let I said, let me look this up because, you know, it couldn't just be the, the, the 13 colonies where folks were repatriated to another country. It couldn't just be, you know, a situation like Liberia, right? It couldn't just be that. Mm -hmm. It had to be something else. So mm -hmm. I started looking up Negro Fort. And with regard to Negro Fort, it's free people of color, fugitive slaves. We've been talking about that all day. You're all show, right? Where people are leaving other areas of the South, um, Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia, wherever you can think of, they're trying to get to the promised land of, of Florida, right? Because it's not the U.S., remember? It's not the U.S. at this point. Um, and so uh, in addition to this hodgepodge of free people of color, fugitive slaves, Seminoles, right? You know, remember, we're talking about Seminoles. So ridiculous. We have to use air quotes um, and some Creeks. Um, and then some of them were trained as members of the colonial Marines during the war of 1812. So this meant that the British government gave them guns, you guys. Mm -hmm. So you already know that this was not copacetic with the U.S. government. They were like, nah, play we are not doing this. So <laughs> they were repatriated to the Bahamas and Trinidad and Tobago. And they're now known as the Medicans. And they have descendants in Trinidad and Tobago right now. And the areas that those folks have settled are named after the regiments that this that this soldiers came from. And if you think, and if you're if you're questioning whether or not I know what I'm talking about, let me go ahead and throw this link up real quick because the National Archives of Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, the, the whole country knows about this. They have several documents that you, you can read it. In fact, I've even found the payments that the regiments were given to Americans on ancestry because they're British records. 
Right. And here they have a whole little, this is a whole little PDF celebrating our heritage, our faith, our future. So and it cool. talks about from 1815 yeah. to 1820, Trinidad became home to over 700 formerly enslaved African-Americans and ex-soldiers of the British colonial Marines. Wow. Fort Negro or Negro Fort is in the area. It's near, uh, near Tallahassee. So it's on the Florida panhandle. What were you going to say, and, Teresa? Mika, I want to add that to this as well. After 1834, the American Colonization Society um, proposed that free blacks be like go to Trinidad after the um, British ended slavery. And basically they could become landowners. I mm -hmm. have many ancestors who were anti-colonizationists. <coughs> um, in our one of our home churches, the, the former minister left with his wife and, and some of the uh, parish members, they went to Trinidad and we have documentation in the Colored American newspaper where they came back and many had died and they were actually almost treated like sharecroppers. They were lied to. Um, and, you know, they, they basically told the full story of what happened. Uh, so you also have some of those people there as well in Trinidad and Tobago who weren't yeah. able to come back. Yeah, this this was like I said, I stumbled upon this because I got I started asking questions about DNA. Um, but this little guide is really it's really nicely put together. And um, nice. they, they talked about, um, you know, the ban of importation of slaves. As I mentioned, you can actually see on Ancestry um, where the, the regiments were paid out by the British government. Mm -hmm. Um, it has names. It's got all that kind of Pretty stuff. Cool. I mean, this is totally there. And so um, Angela said, I wonder if DNA testing of the Americans would match lots of folks from Florida, G uh, Georgia. Like Absolutely. Here's the thing. I don't have any ties to those locations. This comes from my Cherokee Freedman side of the family. <laughs> so who ran off? Mm -hmm. Someone <laughs> Right. So there's a little colorful history. So if there's anything you're, you're going to take from tonight, look at your matches and look for Trinidad and Tobago, especially if you've got um, a lot of DNA match. You know, if you have Florida roots um, or even Georgia roots or, or anything, just look and see um, if you've got anybody from those locations because they, your your ancestor or maybe one of their descendants may be one of those um, 700 formerly um, enslaved folks who were taken to Trinidad and Tobago and their descendants are still there. Uh, matter of fact, I, um, go ahead, Teresa. No, I was gonna add, cause someone earlier in the chat room mentioned Gullah Geechee. Um, I've, been, I've been looking at my sisters uh, and also my uh, cousin Andrea's husband, uh, their DNA connections. Um, Andrea's husband is a direct descendant of Bilali Muhammad, who uh, was one of the original folks down in the Gullah Geechee area. Um, he has a DNA match where Balali Muhammad was actually taken from uh, Africa and ended up in the Bahamas, which at that point, Turks Caicos was a part of the Bahamas. He has a DNA match. They found um, most of Balali's uh, daughters ended up with him. Uh, in South Carolina and in Georgia, I should say, and but he has DNA matches where all four, all of all of the DNA matches are related to folks in Georgia, and this person has only lived in the Bahamas, so they think that that's probably a descendant of one of his sons, who they they don't know what happened to his sons, so that's going to be interested. Um, but but if you have Gullah Geechee root from Florida, Georgia, it, it's something to consider. Yeah, wow. I think so. Anything else you guys want to throw in before we yeah. hop into Ask Mariah? Hey, I was just surprised. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was saying, I, I, I sent the link just, over. I didn't know if you saw it. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and go. I was, dun, dun, dun. I was telling me <laughs> <laughs> earlier, it made me go back home. Y'all stop making me laugh. <laughs> I had one oh, on 23 and me and I had forgot about them little pals of, you know, when your grandparents are born overseas or what have you in African countries. And I, and I did notice that my dad has a lot of like the Trinidad and the Bahamas. And then that made me just even go ahead just today and just reach out to one of his fifth cousins, even though, you know, 
it's kind of off, but I'm now I'm curious to see if she'll write us back and let us know because that is like so off track for our our history that we were documenting that and that you know the oral history that we know. So that yeah. encouraged me to just go ahead and reach out and and take another look at those matches that I really wasn't paying attention to because they were that page is just kind of under the radar at times. Ellen? I just wanted to say that in Broward County, the population is 9.3% Bahamian. I mean, it's significant numbers even today of people in, in Florida, you know, mm -hmm. so. And James, yes, child, I forgot. I knew there was a, a pivotal link I forgot to share. And thank you so much for sending this over. Ooh, and it's in Nashville. Yes, yes. Ooh, look at Ladies that. Ladies Society's That's digital so archive. I already know Ellen is all over this for the rest of the night. Let me oh, no, this. Seen this let me let me I'm I'm say, let me put a clean link into the chat. <laughs> yes, because I was going to try to click that thing, and I knew it was yes. going to take me out of it. Out. It's gonna take you out. That's why I was like, let me make sure I, I do it. I do it clean. Shout Go ahead, James. Uh, shout out to our chatter, Mariva Sainted, who, uh, who who sent this over to me. I, I was like, man, I, I love you. This is this is great. Yes, <laughs> this is a great site here. Uh, did you want me to read it, or you, or you got it? No, I can read it. Um, SSDA St. Okay. Augustine collection contains the ecclesiastical documents of the Diocese of St. Augustine. These are the oldest serial records for persons of African descent in what is today the United States, and this is from 1594 to 1882. Wow. The diocesan records are also, uh, also document European and Indian Catholics from the 16th to 19th century and capture the multiracial and multi-ethnic history of Florida. They reveal marriage practices, miscegenation, and the extensions of kinship through God parentage. St. Augustine's first black baptism, for example, was recorded in 1606. Ooh, wee. Ooh, wee. Lord, today. I just want to read the rest of the paragraph because it sounds so good. <laughs> Founded in 1565 by Spanish conquistador Pedro Mendez de Aviles, the city of St. Augustine is the oldest continuously occupied European settlement in North America. Let's say that again. It's the oldest continuously <laughs> occupied European settlement in North America. Menendez is La Florida, once stretched as far north as present-day South Carolina, but the settlement was plagued by a myriad of problems from indigenous rebellions to pirate attacks, most famously that of Sir Francis Drake in 1586. Wow, gosh, I just want to go and touch these records. Don't you guys want to go and touch this stuff? Right. Ooh -wee. Always in need of labor and military defenders, Spanish officials recruited both uh, slaves and free blacks to serve in Spanish militias after English settlers founded Charlestown in 1670. Notice, look at all those years between that. It's more than 100 years. Black and Indian militias helped defend St. Augustine from English-sponsored attacks. Mm -hmm. Enslaved Africans from the English colony soon began escaping to Spanish, uh, the Spanish colony, where they claimed and received religious sanctuary and admission into the Catholic Church. Lord, today. Mm. Oh, if you can get back this far. Oh, yeah. Let, let, let's look at the records. Look at the records. Yeah, oh, wait, oh, wait. You want me to go here? Wait a minute. Where am I going? Do they have records on there? They should. Yeah, yeah go, go up. Yeah, look, go, go up. Go up. Oh, yeah. Documents. Yeah. yeah, yeah you, you see, and they see, have uh, transcriptions, too. You see the different, you see the different areas. So since it's the, the Florida episode. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lord, <laughs> today. And this is that. Wait a minute. Let me cut. I got to come oh, on yeah. camera and say this. <laughs> This ain't in Florida. Mm, nope. Peep that, right? Right. <laughs> These documents are not in the state of Florida. They are not contained in the Sunshine State. They are here in the Volunteer State in nasty Nashville. Can you believe <laughs> that? Mm. Oh, okay. So what are we going to select, you guys? Oh, let me zoom in because this is going to be good. Everybody, we want to. I want. I want to see a slave baptism. That's what I want to see. Mm -hmm. Here Look at this. Not, this is almost 10,000 records, you guys. Yeah. The Cuban record set is pretty Gosh. amazing, too. Right. And there's transcriptions also. Oh. Look at me looking like I was during the mapping episode. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is leaned in. <laughs> yep. let's, click, let's click the first link. Oh, my God. Come on, Internet. Come on, Internet. Click again. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Who found this? Oh, oh wow. Wow, you yeah. guys. Oh my gosh. Mm. I don't think people realize this is this is 
1720. Mm -hmm. The fact that they even took the time to photograph this. If you go over yep. the next to the last, that's yeah. uh, pages are pretty sad. It's just, oh, oh my gosh. And sometimes you just, when you go to the archives or digital archives or in person, um, I know what I do is I, I, I go up, just go in and look. I, I just take mm -hmm. the time to look through what they have. You never know when you're going to strike gold. This looks like parchment, actually. It doesn't look yeah. like paper. This, yeah, this, look yeah. at this. I mean, yeah, and some skin. of it is damaged, but just look at these records, you guys. And the scanning is so clear. Yeah. Yeah. They look so fragile. But uh, Angela, Angela said, thank God they, they took, they took, they photographed them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. These things can't, can't handle. Oh, my gosh. They can't be so good. They did a good job. The scanning is awesome. Yeah. yeah. If you go, Nika, if you go, if you go back, if you go back and go to the barrels and confirmation, just there's some more images with some more text to show folks. Wow. Okay. You said burials, burials, burials and confirmation. confirmation. Yeah. From 18th century. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. The insects just got that book. Wow. Look at this. <laughs> oh okay. my gosh. Yeah. And then of course there's the learning curve of what they use for Spanish then right. versus now. Mm -hmm. And look at this. Juliana, Josefa, Beatrice. Look at that. Wow. Ooh, child, Lord, I bookmark. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> bookmark. As I said, this is not in Florida. This and is, it's, in, and it's free ninety nine. And free ninety nine. I learned a new word today. Free <laughs> for the magic price of free ninety nine. This is so good. Like I'm just, I'm over here. Like, let me go ahead and just, you know, I don't know if everybody, if other people are as maniacal about their bookmarks as I am, but I, I really am. Um, I, I, yeah, ooh, yes, Ecclesiastes, yes, save in my Florida folder. Bookmark this page. Yeah. Um, you dropped a bomb on him. Dropped yeah. a bomb on him. Let's see. Um, I'm just trying to make sure we've got a uh, chat room covered. Um, Let's see, someone says, true, I can find these links by Google, but I did not see the links for Hillsborough County Public Library Digital Collection, nor Elmer's. Yeah, Noelia Elmer's is like, is I up, need though. you. She, <laughs> what'd you say? Elmer's is up. I couldn't resist that one. You just have to scroll up. <laughs> she said, yeah, she said, go on, scroll back up, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> poor little Elmer, his little, we gonna shut his whole little website down tonight instead of all that traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Poor, poor Elmer. I'm sorry. We, we, you, you wanted the love anyway, boo. Yeah. You did. Yarn. You did. I uh, know. You know what? Be quiet, boy. Be quiet. All right. Well, hopefully we we overwhelmed you with resources tonight for Florida. Uh, we may not be the the brightest, you know, stars on the tree when it comes to researching that location, but we tried to give you some some new some off the radar uh, resources. Um, of course, we can't pack everything into one episode. And of course, as we mentioned, the person that normally is our expert for this could not be with us tonight. So we still tried to make sure that we gave you something. Um, so if uh, you managed to find something out of the records that we talked about, remember, this is this, these are things outside the parameters of state census, things like that that you can access easily by going on one of the major genealogy websites. You know, things like newspapers, you know, just the usual suspects of things that we use. Um, this is stuff outside of that. Um, you are not <laughs> you're not getting the baptismal records of St. Augustine. That that's not you're not getting that on the major search sites. You're getting that at Vanderbilt. Go Vandy. All right, so we are gonna move to your favorite portion of the show, um, which of course is called Ask Mariah. So let me go ahead and get the slides ready. Panel, are you ready? Are you rubbing your hands together? I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. This is your favorite time of Black Pro Gym Live. It is Ask Mariah, where you, the viewer, submit your questions, queries, conundrums, etc., for the panel to weigh in. And we 
present live research help specifically geared towards you. Panelists never see the queries beforehand, so you get to see a chance, you get us a chance, ugh, you get a chance to see us work together live to help our Genia Buds get past their brick walls. And FYI panel, um, the query asker is in the chat room. She's been there the whole time because she's punctual. <laughs> All right, tonight's question is from Nefertiti Hawthorne. She says, I'm trying to find out what happened to my paternal great-great-grandmother's husband, Moses Marshall. He was born in Missouri, September 1850. So she's trying to locate her, I guess, step-grandpa, step-great-great-grandfather, Moses Marshall. She said he was born in Missouri in September of 1850. He married her paternal great-great-grandmother, Louisa Chapman, or Chapman, in October 1887. They lived in San Antonio, Texas. They had five children. The last known public document where he shows up is the San Antonio City Directory of 1905. So Moses Marshall married Louisa Chapman in October of 1887. They lived in San Antonio, Texas, had five children. The last known public document where he shows up is uh, the San Antonio City Directory of of 1905. He's listed in the 1900 census with the family, wife Louisa and children with the last name spelled M-A-C-H, uh, M-A-R-C-H-A-L. Of course, you know that spelling doesn't count in genealogy, unfortunately. Um, in 1910 census, Louisa is a widow. Okay. Um, she says their daughter, Pearlie, is my grandmother's mother. My grandmother, Myrtle, lived to be 100 years old. She says there are no other documents found and no one has done DNA in the family. So we find him in 1900 with the family, with the wife, Louisa, and children. Last name spelled M-A-R-C-H-A-L. In 1910, Louisa is listed as a widow. The daughter, Pearlie, is her grandmother's mother. And um, she, uh, grandmother lived and to be a hundred. And I, I wonder, I'm questioning some of the language because the first thing that I thought was that Moses was not her great great grandfather with the language. Right. Um I thought he he wasn't her great great grandfather just based off of how she phrased everything. So um all right, how are we weighing in on this one? Well I think I found him actually. Um oh, that was quick. Oh. I, well you know I try. Um I found <laughs> a I, I found a um a death record for Moses Marshall born September 1850. Uh, this is from, it was, I'm on Ancestry.com, uh, in the Global Find a Grave Index for Burials at Sea and mm -hmm. Other Select Burial Locations. And it says here, Moses Marshall, uh, born September 1850, uh, he died 1905, death place, Russ County, Texas. Uh, and it says here, spouses, Louisa Marshall Gar, children, Pearl Allen, Geneva Terry, Lillian C. Marshall. Wait a minute, go ahead and set that link over. And, <laughs> and then there's, and there's actually a, yeah, there's, there's like, actually a final grade for him. Wait, you know what? I didn't have a stopwatch. Uh, yeah, I didn't we, we didn't. We didn't start. <laughs> it's like, bam. Like, yeah, I mean, what a burial SC. Hold on. I got to bring this down. Like, well, five year, I was already impressed that she had a five year window. Um, oh, wait a minute. Body there. lost or destroyed? Oh, oh, wait no. a minute. What yeah. was going on during that hmm. time? Well, here's the thing. San Antonio is Bexar County, right? Okay. What was going is, on? Isn't that Bexar County? How far? Because this, this burial is for someone that died allegedly in Rusk County. Right. Um, kind of work did he do? Yeah, and I'm I'm wondering, hold on. We, you know, uh, are you is, saying Russ Rusk County? R-U-S-K. I'm gonna. Map I'm, it. I'm just trying to find out where where it is compared to. Because she, yeah. she did say that she had a relative named Pearl or something, right? I got the well, name that was right. her. That was her great grandmother was named um, Pearl. Yeah, yeah, so these are the five. Right these there. are five hours away from each other. These aren't so close what locations. Was, what was going on? Yeah, this and I'm wondering. And see here, this is a great. This is a great exercise on whether or not you should trust find a grave stuff. Right. Um. Mm -hmm. But this is good. So hold on, let me share but, but so you guys can go. see. Yeah. So, um, you know, don't mind the Ottomans trying to be sold to me right now um, <laughs> or sofas on Amazon Prime because um, I need a couch. Um, anywho, um, 
I was looking at a blue couch too. Isn't this horrible? How your cookies like totally reveal all of your all your business uh -huh. out on the street during Black Women <laughs> Life? Okay, so um, this is a record for a Moses Marshall. We've got September 1850, born in the USA, died 1905 in Rust County, Texas. It says body lost or destroyed. Search yeah. ongoing. Specifically, specifically, search ongoing. What? What? Yeah, I, I think I found a death certificate for him too, actually. Oh, cool. Um, let me see this. Yeah. And this, it. this has got a pearl, but remember, uh, it's yeah. got a pearl, Marshall Allen, and this person would have died in 1911. Mm -hmm. And we've got a Louisa Chapman Marshall. But see, here's the thing: you've got to weigh your information. This has been added by somebody. Do we know who the person is? Is right. this a relative? This looks like a find a grave person, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody who submits, you know. And I, this is this is how I vet stuff. Um, you know, when, when you have, when you've got people who, um, you know, like list things like buried at sea, blah, blah, blah. Like sometimes I'll go to their profiles to see like, is this a person that's like, this is like their hobby where they have like 12,000 graves or is this like somebody that has a small number of them? Mm. Hey James, um, what did you find out on newspapers.com? You know, you're the man. Uh, no, I, no, actually, I didn't. I didn't really something. look on newspaper. I, I'm on Amazon now, and I, I mean, I'm on Amazon. On um, <laughs> on, on ancestry. I told him myself. I'm, to I'm, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on. I'm on ancestry, and I found a uh, a death a, a death uh, a certificate. Okay. For, for, when I believe this is him trying to download it to my. Uh, yeah, there it goes. How are they right, spelling so, his last name in, in the death certificate? May are well. Hold on, I'm a, I'm pulling it up for you right now, so, you, so everybody can see it. Okay. Uh, can I present? Can I present, please? So Ooh, she says. Have... She says that there is oh, a a uh, uh, Moses Marshall who died in Rusk Prison. Um. Mm. Okay, but James, let's see what you've got. Can you see it? Uh, mm. you're gonna have to present to everybody, sweet pea. Present to everyone. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we've got. I like how you saved it to your shoebox. I'm so glad you're so conscientious. Um, yeah. scroll up. Okay, so this uh, looks like father's name. This looks like a child uh, of Louisa yeah, okay. and Moses, um, who died from acute respiratory failure. Okay. Um, James, can you click off the the success? The record has been saved to your shoebox because it's it's covering up pivotal information that we need okay. to see. Can you see it? Yeah, thank you. Just right, click good. the X. Okay, there we go. Okay. So this is a 52-year-old woman. So it looks, looks like this mm -hmm, is, right. this is a, um, a sibling of uh, Pearly. But it matches. You've got San Antonio. You've mm -hmm. got um, she hypertension. This is our daily reminder to watch <laughs> our salt intake and exercise. Right. She also had a chronic myocardial uh I don't know what this is. Diabetes. She does that diabetes. Lord, po, po Geneva. Lord. Mm. Um, let's see. Of course, Karen Galloway is still talking about my couch and shopping on Amazon right now. Um, <laughs> so it looks like she's and Oh, here's here's a great question. So um, come off of uh, full screen, James. OK. Um, because we've got we've got a cemetery on that on that death certificate. Has mm -hmm. Nefertiti looked at the burial records for that cemetery to see if Moses is buried there? So, mm -hmm. you know, 19, if we know he died between 1905, or you know, between 1905 and 1910, right? Because, you know, oh, here's the other question. Sorry to go back. On that city directory, does it say Moses Marshall or does it say um Louisa Marshall with Edward, because if it says that, that lets you know that she was a widow of, I'm sorry, a widow of Moses, if it uses yeah. the word W-I-D. Mm -hmm. So I would go back and look at that city directory, but if it does not, we can pretty much assume he died between 1905 and 1910. And if that's the case, that usually in most places predates um, death certificates, although San Antonio is a, is a decently sized city. So they sh the adherence probably should have taken place earlier, but it's no guarantee. So I would go back to that cemetery that Geneva was buried in for that death certificate that James just found and um, go to the Sexton's office and ask them about any other marshals who may be buried in the same plot or buried around and see if a Moses Marshall is buried there as well. Um, let's see. Okay, she says, I, yes, I have the San Antonio Color Cemetery records. He is not there. Okay. Um, 
let's see, Shelly's asking who the informant was on the death certificate. Um, let's see, any other any other places, newspapers? I thought about that as well. I'm looking on Genealogy Bank, um, and I'm also going to take a look at newspapers.com. James, and see what they have. Newspapers, or you need me to go over there? Um, I, I'm, I'm still looking on, on Ancestry because I think. Okay. I'm, I'm, what do I yeah. type in in newspapers? Um, um, we're just going to yeah. see what they have. Okay, so we've. San Antonio coverage on Genealogy Bank is. Mm, um, they've got something for this time period. It's about 4,295 um, pages available. You can search for. I'm going to put in Mo. It could be Mose or Moses. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's another good point. I've seen Mose. I've seen Moses. My either, question is, do we way. know anything about his occupational life or any, anything else about him you know, socially or anything like that? Yeah. Um, Shelly's asking about John Lewis Marshall, um, and if, on the, who's the informant on Geneva's death certificate. Um, and Shelly's saying he's a sibling of, uh, of uh, Geneva. Okay, let's see. Genealogy Bank. Lord, why did this come up? This is a bad scan. I'm like, clearly this is not the right person. But it's, it says, kill two and himself, and this is not the right person. Insane farmer murdered his wife and daughter and blew his own head off. <laughs> But it's not the right person. <laughs> so don't freak out, Nefertiti. <laughs> this is not your most. Oh, um, John Lewis Marshall has a registration card, a World War One draft card, and has an address. He was born 1899. Let's see. He was a laborer, Osvaldo Rock and Asphalt Company. And the nearest relative is Louisa Marshall. Okay. Okay, so I can. So San Antonio's got some good coverage on um, on uh, newspapers.com. So I'm gonna do a search there as well. She says she's got the World War One draft registration card. Okay. She said that they were married at St. James Amy Church in San Antonio. Have you checked the oh. church records? Right. Yeah. I would, yeah. Um, okay, I would do. yeah. Uh, wait, which which church was it? St. Uh, St. James AME. AME. <clears throat> yeah, I'm about to say, um, I can I think I know the pastor on that. Actually. Um, Did they have a cemetery affiliated with it? I never I've never been there, but I know I know of that church actually. Um but this goes back to what I was saying earlier about checking the AME um conference records. Uh let me go back on archive. Uh because I, I think Archives has a, they have a pretty good amount. What was the year? 1905? Uh, well, we were saying uh, 1905, between 1905 and 1910, but depending on what that, that city directory said about, you know, remember I mentioned right. it, 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 did it list, list Louisa as a widow or did it say Moses Marshall and then, you know, Louisa in parentheses? Mm -hmm. um, she says it his, it's a historical church, so I, I would look right. there as well. Um, has she been to San Antonio? Have you been to the county clerk's office to go and do research there, looking for things outside of stuff online, deed records, mortgage records, um, you know, uh, court proceedings, um, any of that kind of stuff that you can only get on site? Um, and the only reason why I know about um, the county is because I have family there and I do research. <laughs> They've got a great little website. Um, granted, it's not really historical in nature. Um, she says she has not been there yet. Maybe time to get on the road for that one. Yeah, because this this may be a situation where you cannot answer the question that you have until uh, you know until you until you go. Yeah. Yeah, she says did, I did know you, road did, trip. Did, 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 she, did, she answer, <laughs> did she answer my question about about his uh? Occupation, anything like that? Uh, occupation. What was his occupation? We can get that information as well. And DNA. Right? Because mm -hmm. this is a great-great-grandparent. 
So this is this is you know you've got remnants of his DNA and your DNA, mm-hmm. and if if you watched my legacy DNA or legacy uh uh webinar that I just did the other day, um if you've got any cousins that you know are related to you through Moses and um Louisa, test them because you know anybody who shares DNA with you and them, mm-hmm. of course, is a connection through one of the both of them. So um, I would I would find family members that fit that relationship. Um, awesome. She says she watched it thanks to True. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm glad. If he was a laborer or a driver, that's where his occupation was listed. Any other suggestions before we? To we look up the, uh, the the employer on that draft card could have been the same place, possibly yeah, nearby. Well, yeah, what I'm going to do is, because uh, I actually know a pretty important, uh, a well-read AME minister in Texas, I'm going to ask him about the St. James AME Church's uh, uh, records, if you know how, how, how good they are, um, and as well as the uh, Wilbur Curtis Masonic Museum down there. Because I can't ask the genealogist down there, because she actually is on vacation here in D.C. I saw her today. But when mm-hmm. she gets back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask her to go into the 1905 uh, era death records for that as well. And a public library. Have you done yeah. research on, um, you know, see where the genealogy library is in mm-hmm. San Antonio um, and and go there because sometimes you have city directories available. It may be like 1905, 1903, 1901, but then you go to the local level and they actually have the years in between. So you can actually more pinpoint when he died versus mm-hmm. having a ballpark figure. Um, I've had to do that for people. Also, when you go to the local level, look at when he paid for taxes on things like animals or vehicles and things like that and see when he drops off the tax list that will sort of give you a a date or maybe a year range or so when he passed away um, because adherence to filing death certificates is not was not always um, there I would take a look at the witnesses on the marriage license between him and Louisa um, Mm -hmm. research those folks and find out how they're connected um, I think that will also aid, those are those breadcrumbs I talked about in the webinar um, where you've got to really sift through and analyze your documents and those will help you, you know, gain context on how people are related to you. You don't know how they are. Um, the DNA will help assist in that and they will also provide you with leads. Um, Shelly mentions going back another generation and then come back. That doesn't quite make sense because she doesn't know the generation before Moses. So how can she go back to come forward? Um, yeah. All right, that's all I have, unless you guys have something else. You're gonna hang it up for the evening, no, do, do a few no, current events. And no, I don't have anything else, but I am gonna um, follow up with her uh, afterward. Uh, maybe give, me, give me about a week or so, because uh, I think okay. that's something we can probably run down. Okay, she said the witness is Adeline Chanel, her mother and George Marshall don't know uh, who he is related to. I would look into those folks, do research, also look into the neighbors. Um, and see if they're connected. And she says, "Thank you, James," with That's like five fun. exclamation points. I know. Isn't actually, so I'm gonna nice. be. Actually, I'm gonna. Be, I'm gonna be. I shouldn't be telling you this. I'm actually gonna be down there in a few weeks. Uh, we'll see. We'll. I'll talk to her. We'll see. I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm, only, I'm actually going to text mm-hmm. her. Um, mm-hmm. I might have some extra time on my hands. We'll see how it works. Okay. Okay. Um, true. Uh, no, uh, Ms. Hill is asking for the Catholic Diocese ecclesiastical and secular sources of slave societies. She she wants she wants that link again because she ain't gonna scroll up for it. <laughs> she gonna work True's last nerve today, baby. Oh my gosh, do you have a brick wall? Would you like help from Black Pro Gen scaling that wall? Submit your query today for Ask Mariah. The link is in the description of each and every episode of Black Pro Gen Live. Remember to be specific. Tell us everything you search so we don't duplicate the efforts if you get selected. And cross your fingers, you. Uh, when you press submit, you just make it chosen for one of our upcoming episodes. Moving forward, current events. Um, I don't know why hey. this is looking just all types of shady. Lord, what happened to my tech? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Google has teamed up with the Obsidian Collective to digitize the archives of Black newspapers. The Obsidian okay. Collection serves as an 
Yes, Obsidian, Obsidian Collection serves as an archive for several Black newspapers, including the Chicago Defender and the Baltimore Afro-American. The collection now has a new lofty goal to digitize every article and photograph in its collection. The collection has materials on microfilm that covers several significant historical events, including the Great Migration, the Jim Crow era, and civil rights movement. With the help of Google Arts and Culture, the archives may be will be available online for free. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, 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 awesome. All right. Next, of course, we've got to talk about Yay. President Yay. Grimpa. Uh, James, do you want to weigh in on this? Okay. Well, uh, basically, the gentleman, the handsome gentleman you all see on the slide is uh, Mr. Wallace L. Smith Jr. Uh, he is actually my great grandfather, and uh, he was the first black principal of the integrated school system uh, of what is now Houston County, Alabama. And uh, he, he just turned 99 last month also. And he um, had a street named after him. What was formerly not Church Street is now Wallace L. Smith Jr. Drive. So when I buy my house in Alabama, you know what street I'll be living on because <laughs> my great grandfather had a street named after him. And uh, it's a yeah. supreme honor. Uh, I'm actually his oldest great grandchild. And uh, I, was, I was very upset I couldn't be there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I'm very proud of him. I wanted to make sure I shared that with my Black Progen uh, family. Because uh, this is—he's not an ancestor yet; he's an elder. But but we're, we're very thankful, and uh, I wanted to make sure I shared that with everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Grandpa Wallace, go ahead, Grandpa Wallace. Grandpa Wallace, he has some good stories to tell. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> no no <laughs> doubt about right. it. All right, we've got a new look, new theme, and more new shows to get you up to speed on all things people of color, genealogy, and family history related. Visit whosnikasmith.com for a downloadable schedule so you don't miss a thing. As millions have learned their genetic ancestry, historical narratives are continually being challenged. Episode 60 will discuss how genetic genealogy is now informing how people of color identify and how the information is changing the established narratives about American history. Join us on Tuesday, June 26th at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern for DNA and Identity and the Making of Africans in America. You do not want to miss that conversation. Mm, it's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. It's going to be lit and juicy. All right. Don't forget to tune in to the long-running research at the National Archives and Beyond, hosted by Black Progen Live panelist Bernice Bennett. This week's guest is Ellen Fernandez Sacco, <laughs> who is on our show. So you get to you get a double dose of Ellen this week. You get a double Ooh. dose of Ellen. Ooh, Ellen, walk in. It's a special flavor, like Ben and Jerry's. It's only going to be on the shelf for a little while. You better get it while you can. All right. That's going to mm -hmm. be airing this Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. Also, don't forget to check out the African Roots podcast hosted by Black Persian Life panelist Angela Walton Raji. Mm -hmm. Of course, we always have to remind you don't forget to join the conversation. Tweet us at Black Progen. Hashtag your tweets, Black Progen, especially if you see any news or anything. In fact, um, a lot of people have been sending us stuff this way, uh, making sure we know about it, which is great. We love that. So continue doing that. Uh, don't forget uh, live chat taking place and it will be available at the end of the show. We cannot show you how to work it on your particular computer. You're going to have to go to Google help, baby. We can't do that. Uh, just know you can rewind the show as it takes place as well. So you just in case you miss something we say, you can go back and you can catch up um, as the show happens. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to True Lewis, who's going to sign us out. True, we can't hear you, boo. You got to unmute yourself. <laughs> I, I hit the button, sorry. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Nika, for another great episode. That was fun there for Florida. I learned a lot. Um, I just want to thank all the viewers uh, for coming out and spending this time with us here on um, a Tuesday night. And we just appreciate all you guys coming out and giving us comments on Twitter and in the chat room. And I want to thank the panelists. You're awesome. You're always just giving all you can and Shelly out there, Bernice, Miss Angela, Tony. We, I just appreciate all of it. And Nika does too. So with that, we just want to say good night and thank you. And we'll see you next week. DNA. Good night, everyone. Black Pro Gen Live. Black Pro Gen Live. Black Pro Gen. Hello, everybody out there. Black Pro Gen Live. Black Pro Gen Live. Oh, child, I stayed awake.
the place where evidence tells the stories.